Yeah, so we thank the Lord today. He's given us another day. We really need to redeem these days. The devil is about. And he's coming in like a flood. Everywhere. We would go. And so... uh, We can rejoice in the Lord, always. Come on in, sister. Yeah. Yeah. Come on in, sister, and take a seat. And the Lord uh, will minister to us today through this earthen vessel. The Lord knows what He's doing, and. only recently I had a, a little bit of mail from a brother that I um, ministered to 20 years ago, Brother Joy. Baptised him up here and he's down in Victoria now. And he asked if he, if he uh, was alright if he sent me some honeycomb. And uh, when I looked at that, what he said and waited on the Lord and the Lord said well you're going to need strength it was a type of strength in the Old Testament everywhere you read about honey it was about provision and strength and only a week or so before I got that email of Brother Jai sending up fresh honey from his Honey, from his hive out the back of his yard in, in Wollongong I was mentioning it on the message about the goodness of honey and the medicinal purposes, benefits yeah so the Lord uh, was uh, ministering to me through Brother Joy about needing needing strength for the battle ahead, it's going to be a hard year 2017 it's going to be a hard year and it's going to be a very uh, demanding year. We see that the um, the government of Australia is uh, going downhill fast. The governments of the world are going down fast, and we're going to see it. I believe uh, fast tracked. Uh, a lot of things will be fast tracked including my prophecy of 2001 Australia will be a third world country and people don't want to hear that they much prefer to hear that the Lord's going to rain money from heaven and everything's going to get better that's not the way of the Bible the Bible doesn't say that the word of God doesn't say that the word of God says it has to go downhill to the very day that Jesus comes all the way day by day and so we're going to need we're going to need uh, more than natural honey we're going to need Jesus he's the honey in the rock eh? my Jesus is and need that relation, loving relationship with Jesus so um Let's go into our message today on the 18th of the 1st, 2.17. We've got a few scriptures to read, but ultimately we're going to have a look at a song, song, poem, writing that i done going back 27 years ago, but still very appropriate uh, for the world today 27 years ago huh? that's a long time ago but the Lord was ministering to me then about this very song he's ministering to me about the contents of this song and uh, at the cross at the cross the, the song is called at the cross And it says, at the cross I found forgiveness. At the cross I found a friend. 
At the cross I found Lord Jesus and at the cross I found myself. I laid them down that day at Calvary, all my burdens I gave to him. Now I'm free, I'm free to worship. Now I'm free to go his way. Such joy is to be found there for the pain he gladly bared, all the things I could not carry. He gladly took them upon himself and I still pray on those lines today in the mornings with my family depending on the timelines it might be in the car but we still pray and before the children go to school and along the way 20 minute drive or whatever there's 20 minutes of prayer going in there we're redeeming the time but uh the scriptures are clear. If we have a look at our sheet in John 17, 13. The first scripture there says, But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. You see that? The, the, world, the world has joy. We can't deny that they have all sorts of illicit joy. They have all kinds of joy out there. But the Lord is very specific. We know Jesus is the teacher of teachers. He really does cross the T's and dot the I's and even goes further. The scriptures tell us in Hebrews 4.12 he goes down to the marrow of the bone. And he dissects soul from spirit, solic thinking from spiritual thinking, solic wisdom from spiritual wisdom and heavenly wisdom, always showing us, no, that is not of me, this is what's of me. The ways of men and women seem right in their own mind, but the way thereof is death and destruction. But the way of the Lord is righteousness, joy and peace by the power of the Holy Ghost. And we can never be righteous. We can never have the joy that he speaks about or the peace unless we have his spirit. Unless we are led by his spirit. So this little song, poem that I wrote 27 years ago is still fresh to me. Uh, at the cross I found forgiveness. I mean, is there anything that the world needs today in 2017? Is there anything that they need more than forgiveness? Hey? But the pride of men and women won't allow them to humble themselves, repent and admit that they're filthy sinners, every one of us. And all our birthday presents and Santa Claus presents and all our anniversary presents and are just filthy rags in the sight of God. The Bible says all our good deeds are like filthy rags. That's all they amount to. When we're not born of His Spirit, we're still born of mum and dad, degenerated in mindset. But... To be forgiven, to, to repent and, and acknowledge what God says about us. That we are lost sheep, blind leading the blind to the fires of hell. Right? And when Mr. Trump gets sworn in, there's going to be a fast tracking all through the world 
of destruction. Mr. Trump's a loose cannon. And uh, God has allowed it. The Almighty has allowed it. The Almighty God allowed Idi Amin to rule. All the time he did. But look at Idi Amin. Look at his character and the violence. And the evil of that man. Yet they wrote a song, Most Amazing Man I Have Ever Seen. Idi 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 Amin. Most amazing man you've ever seen. So God allows all this to go on and it's hard to process, I know. It's hard to 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 take it all in. This is the God of love. It's high time that church people um, and church ministers come to see the reality of Jesus, of God. And he's not some teddy bear. God is God. And we got scripture after the scripture showing his judgment, showing his righteousness and loving kindness the three of them so we can uh, take it or leave it with Jesus and I've said for years many years that uh, there's only one kind of person that will come to this fellowship and stay here and that's a person that's out for Jesus heart if you're looking for hoy or bingo you're looking for a sheila or a, or a bow or a bloke or you're looking for business or a job or you're looking for something else you're gonna have to go to one of these religious places and i say things like this because i want to get it across the, the the waves and the seas to everyone Jesus' disciples didn't hang out with Jesus because they wanted something other than the word. And no true prophet of the scriptures, the people never came to the prophets of old for anything else except the word. What's the Lord saying? So, got a lot of P-R-O-F-I-T-S today. They're making a killing. They're richer than the devil. Hey? And the devil wears Prada, doesn't he? <laughs> He's a bit of a gay. <laughs> or what do they call it? LGBT or something today, isn't it? You don't know who's who in the Zoom. Hey? Not sure if it's a boy or a girl. Hey, babe, your hair's all right. Back to our second scripture on our sheet. These things I have spoken to you that my joy. There we go again. Totally different scripture. John 15, 11. My joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Oh, look, we need that today, don't we? We need a joy that remains and, 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 and fills us. They're not filled out there that... Even the church people. I, 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 I differentiate and I separate churched ED people from disciples of Jesus. Churched people are churched. They've been churched. We, we know that by their, what comes out of their mouth. What comes from your mouth comes from your heart. And I've been ministering on streets for 29 and a half years. Spain, England, Africa, Philippines. Just came back from Las Vegas recently. And they, they're all, you know, no matter where you go, there's food, trees, people, yes and no. There's religion. And there's a holy remnant. There's big buildings worth millions in prime real estate
and it, of no avail. A woman came to me yesterday on the street. She was rather troubled, but it's not her problem, and she's wearing it. it it's a long, long story, and I only got a thumbnail sketch. And there's a lot of legal stuff involved, and it's what would you say? It's going to bring a lot of hierarchy down in churches. But she was talking to me, and she said, I don't usually come this way. And I said, well, I wasn't really coming down this morning to minister. I had a few things on. I've been doing a bit in the office. but. And she said, you know what, Paul? She said, I don't know you. You've counseled me and ministered to me this morning. She said, I feel like a new person. And she said, when you laid your hand on me, the power. And she said, everything you said, she said, I was listening to a minister recently who spoke at a particular church and she said he's a very intelligent man. But she said, you know what? I got nothing whatsoever out of it. She said, it's because what you just said, the intellect gets in the road of the Holy Ghost. The scriptures say... Uh, the disciples were uneducated and untrained. Must have been with Jesus. And I was only saying to Brother Shane this morning that God calls and we answer the call. And the disciples were called. They never said like they do in today's world, I'm going to be a pastor. I'm going to be a prophet. I'm going to school to be a evangelist. That that's not the way of the Bible. That's a that's a delusion. That's the one world church. That's a religious concoction of high-minded men and women. Because I have the best backing I I could possibly want, and that's scripture infallible scripture Ephesians 4.11 he who ascended and descended gave gifts to men apostle prophet, pastor, teacher evangelist, it's a gift you don't learn a gift and you don't buy a gift it's a gift and so when the Lord gifts you it's a natural thing in the spirit. It's like drinking a glass of water. It's, it's a no-brainer. It's just a natural instinct for me. I want to drink. I'll pick it up. There's water in there. It's all done. It's like when they said about Jesus reading out of Isaiah in the temple and they said, wow, you know, he just finished reading Isaiah and Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Preach the gospel to the poor and um, heal the brokenhearted, set the captive free, put at liberty those who are oppressed by the evil one, proclaim the appropriate year of the Lord. And he sat down and they were just gobsmacked. Well, it's because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. It's like that. Sister Patricia yesterday, she said, wow, you, you know, when you laid your hand on me, when you spoke to me, just scripture, it was just scripture. I said, that is the minister, of, the true minister of the Lord. Scripture. That's 1 Peter 4, 11, which says very clearly, we're to minister with the ability that Christ has given us. And we're to speak as the oracles of God. That God gets the glory. See, there's no glory for the uneducated and un untrained. That no Bible college taught me. No man taught me. But the Lord taught me. And it's it's a lot more painful to be taught by the Lord than it is a Bible college teacher. 
<laughs> I tell you, you really do learn hands-on. So, our message today is going to be called The Burden of Sin. Given our song and our poem, At the Cross I Found Forgiveness. Wow. The world is out there right now. Rich, poor, black, white, known and unknown. And they have this huge burden on their back. You know, the woman... The woman... Uh, the sister that came to me yesterday, Sister Patricia, she has been trying to find closure with an issue. I won't go into detail, but I won't even go into the slightest detail, but it's been years and it's you can see it's taken toll on her. But she got key counseling yesterday from the Lord through me and I said to Sister Patricia I said look you have received the best counsel possible the infallible unadulterated word of God Jesus is called counsellor and uh, there's no greater counsel because he's omniscient there's no counsellor in the world and no counsellor that learns to be a counsellor can match it. And we, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, an array of counsellors out there. There's forensic counsellors, psychological, religious. There's all kinds of counsellors. Uh, psychologists. There's a never-ending list of courses to do to become a counsellor, but the reality is, and the amazing thing is, Jesus is the counsellor. Isaiah 9, 6, unto us a child was born, and uh, his name shall be counsellor. He was given to us. Isaiah 11, 1. The seven spirits of the Lord will be with the man Jesus. The spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, power, understanding, fear of God. Those seven spirits are condensed into one. The Holy Ghost has all of them. Just like the Ten Commandments were condensed into two commandments. So, the whole church is called to counsel. The whole church. Everyone, in one degree or another. But our message today is... The burden of sin, what a heavy... Look, sin is heavy. Sin is heavy. It's very heavy. I know. I was the sinner of sinners. I was the biggest sinner of all. And that was magnified to me when an Aboriginal told me about Jesus 29 and a half years ago. Which is why I wrote the songs, the multiple songs and poems and literature I write, I can't stop writing. You know, I just can't stop singing, can't stop praising, can't stop uh, serving the Lord. Um, Holy Ghost possess and obtains with the Lord. You could say in a word, in love. And you know, that's the only person, male or female, that will enter the kingdom. The rest are just churched. They've jumped through all the hoops. They've got certificates on the wall. They've got lots of churched friends. They've got 
churched accolades, churched recognition. But you know, by the grace of God, I can say, as Paul said, I bear this this scars. I bear the marks of Christ in my body, on my head. There's scars from when the Muslim set me on fire. Muslim from Saudi tried to kill me. I bear them in my body. I don't need a piece of paper calling me Reverend Dr. Father, Mother. I don't need that rubbish. I mean, Jesus said to Moses, you know, when Moses said, who am I going to say, call me to the ministry? And... Uh, Jesus said, tell him I am sent you. That's a big long name, isn't it? I am. So, it was sort of like Sister Patricia yesterday said, you've helped me more and I've understood you more than that highfalutin minister that came to the church. She said, his words were just dead. But with the PhD and ABC and KFC behind the name and all the rest of it. <laughs> Powers of darkness. They do it every time. They usually wait till the meeting starts. It's the devil. The world isn't aware of the ways and the wiles of the devil. But we as the people of God know that Jesus called them the powers of the air. So wherever there be air, wherever there is air, there's powers of darkness endeavouring to influence you in the opposite direction of the Word of God. Trying to influence you to go contrary to Jesus' way. Amen? Amen. So, our message today, the burden of sin, very heavy burden. We get abundant relief when we're forgiven. Abundant relief. At the cross, I found forgiveness. You see, the outworking of the cross is, was and is nothing but phenomenal. You can't count the, the beneficial outworking you can't describe the beneficial outworking of the cross it's just so great it's so infinite but I minister on a few of the beneficial aspects in this song I found forgiveness at the cross and the beginning of picking up our cross and the beginning of acknowledging the Christ of the cross is to repent. That's the very beginning. That lets the Lord know we're willing to pick up our cross. Picking it up is another story. But we, the Lord sees all things and our hearts are laid bare to the Lord and when we truly repent there's a huge burden called sin lifted off our backs and we are set free at the cross I found forgiveness I mean I wasn't aware that I walked for many 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 years with this burden on my back and this this uh, this sin was the reason my sinful way was the reason for this great weight and I like most Adamic people and humans in the world thought it was this and I'll fix it by doing this and I'll fix it by doing that and I'll 
I'll fix it by going here. I'll fix it by soul searching. I'll fix it by... There's no fix in the burden of sin except through repentance. You see, Jesus is not the answer to our problem. Repentance is the answer. Jesus is the power behind repentance. When we repent, truly repent, meaning not going back next week, a month later, oh, I've relapsed. There's no relapse with repentance. There's no relapse. That is a lie from the devil. When you really repent, you, you are forgiven. And you're cleansed. And you're delivered. No relapse. And then you're empowered against that sin. You don't go back. Because if you go back, you haven't repented. God cannot cleanse, deliver and empower a person who says they repented and they went back. That's the sorrow of the world. That's not godly sorrow. Godly sorrow leads to repentance not to be regretted. Amen. So at the cross I found forgiveness. At the cross I found a friend. Hey, what a friend we have in Jesus. There's a lot of fair-weathered friends out there. You know, I don't want fair-weathered friends. You know, today I'm not looking for a friend. You know, you have churches out there and church people saying, what you have to do is... You know, we want to get the people in. I'm not here to get people in. I'm here to preach a message. I'm here to teach the word. I'm not here. Jesus never sent his disciples out to get people into a building. That is not the gospel. You know, the Roman Catholics say, come home to the mother church. But the true message of the gospel is come home to Father God, not Mother Church. No church can save you. No church on the earth. Only Jesus can save you. And we come home to Father through Jesus. There's no other way except we come by the way of the cross. It leads home. It's a painful thing to, to repent. It has to be because we're, we're, in, we're in grounded. It's grafted into us this Adamic, this Adam and Eve attitude of selfishness. Me first. And it's what I want. That's what Eve's behaviour was. It's about me. She didn't even consider her husband for one minute. She didn't pass the, the decision making by the heart. What do you think about this, Adam? This uh, serpent is propositioning us. What do you think? It's too late. She, she touched, touched the, the fruit and then the decay started that moment. The, 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 the rot set in between God and mankind. And then Adam went along with it. And now, voila, we have what we have today. Hatred, violence, immorality, homosexuality. We have all the, the wars. The very first war between was between God and mankind. So we can't blame Mussolini and Ben Laden. And we can't blame Hitler. It goes back to the woman, doesn't it? Which is obvious why women don't lead churches and run churches. According to scripture, a woman can never be the pastor of one wife. Unless she's lesbian, of course. And we don't want to talk about that because you're being unfair. You, 
stop judging well you better close down every courthouse and magistrate in the world and see if you'll say don't judge it'll be like chaos wouldn't it you'd have every evil in the world running rampant in your neighbourhood you, you, you take the police away the magistrates and, 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 and the authorities that are laid down in Romans chapter 13 1 to 7 you know when they pull you up for speeding and you say don't judge they're going to laugh at you right? and when the girl gets raped down the road and and the the rapist says, "Oh, don't judge." I mean, it, 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 it's just it's absurd. But that's the way the world will go. That's the way the world will be in the last days. The Bible says, "As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be before the coming of Jesus for the second time." Eating, drinking, marrying and giving in marriage will be the priorities. And that's what we see on television, eating or just entire hours and hours of viewing on about eating and eating. And they worship. They worship the food and they oh and the, the potatoes married the pumpkin and and, 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 and the, the olive oil uh, uh, drip down off the carrots onto the ontherinteretigus that just passed us by. The Bible says that their belly is their God. Whose God is their belly. And then you got the wine, eating, drinking and marrying. That's how it will be before Jesus comes. And everyone's, oh they're making new wine and new beer and they're breaking into all new, you know, chicken flavoured beer and, and they're doing it. It's all about drink, isn't it? Drink and food and marrying. And we've never heard so much uh, dialogue about marriage, have we? Ever, ever, ever. Than we do today. Jesus, I'm telling you, he's on his way. You better believe it. And we better get ready. We better get ready because he's not coming back for a Dalmatian bride. He's not coming back for a bride with pizza on her dress and booze out with, hanging off two men or two other religions or one other religion. He's not coming back for a bride that's hugging her family tree. Or worshipping her ancestors with the photos all on the wall. Who's so proud that they are Irish. Or they, I'm so proud that I'm related to Ned Kelly, the thief and murderer. I'm so proud, you know, to be an Australian, a thief who stole land. I'm so proud, you know, to be this. I'm so proud to be that. we just got to face the facts. Because of sin and the burden of sin, we're weighed down to these depleted attitudes. We're bogged down. There has to be repentance. You know, I'm so proud of my family name. I'm not. Because all my ancestry, like yours, are filthy sinners, every one of them. And all their good deeds were like filthy rags. Can someone say amen? amen? You might want to say, oh my, I won't be coming back. So, well, obviously this is not for you, the truth. It's the truth that sets us free, not religion. You know, religion will just bind you up. And you'll be just... And you're... 
the devil, devil will put a bit of marketing tape over your mouth and you and I'll just pat you on the head all the way to hell and they'll say oh isn't he lovely isn't she lovely they don't disagree with our lives and the other verse that we have there is in John 15:10 Actually, John 15, 10a, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Oh, we've got a lot of love boats around, but they don't keep the commands, do they? So how can the love of God be there? How can the love of God be there if they don't keep the commands of God? Hey? The love of God cannot be there. It's either lust or, or, or it's either, you know, worldly or, or, or carnal fr friendship, whatever it may be, <laughs> whatever it may be. But it certainly isn't the love of God. Paul said to the Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians, I'm pretty sure it is, Chapter 13, verse 6. Love rejoices in the truth. Isn't that right, love? Love rejoices in the truth, not in sin. 1 Corinthians 13, 6. That's the love chapter. You know, God is love. God is love. 1 Corinthians 13, 6. Love rejoices in the truth. But love does not rejoice in sin. The world rejoices in sin. They love sin. And they love it. It's like taking away their identity. If you try to take this, they love sin. They thrive on it. I used to. Oh, I love sinning. I just loved it. You know? And it's a, it, 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 it's a great burden. But yet the world love it. So that gives us a forward slash insane. It's insanity. We know the Word of God tells us through Paul the Apostle to Timothy that God has given us another spirit, not not the spirit of the devil. See, it was the spirit of the devil that influenced Adam and Eve. And she'd said, yes, okay, we'll, we'll listen to you, Satan, the snake, the serpent of old, we'll listen to you. We won't do what the Lord said, don't touch the tree, we'll do what you said. And behind every teaching is a spirit. And, and you're going to go away today and those listening worldwide and this will go on YouTube like the other 760 or whatever there is there. And you've got to go away today and, and, and ask yourself which spirit was behind Pastor Paul Sheehan today? Was it the spirit of the Lord? Or was it the spirit of the devil? You've got to ask yourself that. And if you say you have the Holy Spirit, ask him. Ask the Lord. I'll guarantee you, it won't be the spirit of the devil, the answer. Because I'm not speaking the, the word of the devil. I'm speaking the words of Jesus. Pure proven like silver in the furnace seven times. Amen. Infallible, unadulterated word of God. So many people say they love Jesus, but they don't do what he says. Luke 6, 46. Why do you call me Lord, but you don't do what I say? I'm not your Lord. You are your Lord. You, you do what you say. You don't do what I say. You cherry pick 
the scriptures. I'll, I don't mind this one. I don't mind Psalm 23, but I don't like to read about Ezekiel chapter 9 where Jesus slayed men, women and children. I like to read the scriptures about, oh, you know, rejoice in the Lord always. But I don't like to read that scripture in Revelation chapter 14 verses 9 to 13 where it says that Jesus is going to look down into the pit of hell and watch the people, the sinners who never repented. He's going to watch them being tormented. I don't want to read that. I, I, I just don't want to know, see it that way. Well, you don't want the truth. You never know Jesus. You're not really accepting Jesus. You're not even receiving him. Because to receive Jesus is to receive his judgment, righteousness and loving kindness. You're actually putting Jesus down saying, oh, well, I don't like that piece of you. It's not a piece of him. His judgment is, Jesus is judgment. Jesus is love. Jesus is righteousness. Jesus is God. Almighty. Manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached on to Gentiles, received on in the world and received up into glory. Jesus is Jesus. But Jesus is not Father, and Jesus is not Holy Ghost. Father is Father, Jesus is Jesus, Holy Ghost is Holy Ghost. The three are one, and they are all gone. Amen. And everyone said, Amen. Oh, I'm going to say hallelujah. So our message today, the burden of sin. Oh, what is wrong with me? How many people are slogging Valium? How many people are slogging drugs and drinking themselves stupid and, 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 and maxing out on their credit cards and, and shopping till they drop to try and shake this burden that's on? They don't know what it is, so they go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist and they, the burden somehow just begins to become worse. It's sin. Sin. We know it's sin because we read the, the Word of God and the Word of God says through a, a humble man by the name of King David who was a great, great man in Psalm 51 and the scriptures read that he said, Oh Lord, I have sinned. When he went off with Bathsheba in Psalm 51, let's have a, just a quick look there. In Psalm 51, verse 4, Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. And then we go to Psalm 51, And the verse is 10, make it 9. Hide your face from my sin and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the steadfast spirit within me. Don't cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. And then I'll be able to teach sin as your way. And they can be converted then if they repent. At the cross I found forgiveness. At the cross I found a friend. At the cross I found Lord Jesus. At the cross I found myself. So many people, they work seven-eighths of their lives in jobs that they never liked or they go from job to job to job. That was me in the world. I had more jobs than feeds. I was working for electricians. I was working on farms. I was in the army. Then I was bricklaying, working for tilers, indoor painters, external painters, chip rock fixers. I was working at a shipping company. I was, I was working, uh, 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 picking crops. I was working... Uh, 
picking fruit. I, I was working with brake technicians. I was working as a loader driver. I was working work at different job in the, the the railway. I was working in the mines on trains and from one job to the next, a lost soul. What is the matter with me? What is going? Who am I? I really want to know who I am. Who, 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 I really want to know. And I never knew who I was until I went to the cross. I went to Jesus. I found myself preacher, teacher, poet, proclaimer of the only way to heaven. Now I know who I am. I know who I am. Even when I was a drunk in the pubs, they used to say, you should be a preacher, you know. But never did I think I'd be a preacher. Preacher. When I was a drunk and hung over and down and miserable, I'd say, oh, I'd really want to be a priest. And my sister used to comfort me and say, you can't be a priest, Paul. They're, they're, they're really educated people and it takes seven or eight years and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't mean I wanted to be a Roman Catholic priest or an Anglican or Uniting Church. What I meant was I, I, I want to do the work of God. What I meant was I want to be close to God. And the Lord sorted all that and now I am a priest. And he, he gave me a double blessing and he said, I've made you a king and a prince unto God, Yahweh. Revelation chapter 1, can we go there? Revelation chapter 1. All right. And the verse is 6. Jesus has made his true disciples kings and priests to Father, to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Revelation 1 6. Every follower of Jesus is a king and a prince. Everyone. By his blood. By his blood. You've got these Roman Catholic hypocrites saying there's an earthly priesthood. There's no earthly priesthood. There's only a spiritual priest. There's only one priest. His name is Jesus. The veil in the temple was torn from the top to the bottom. The Holy of Holies was open and there was an open door given by faith for whoever would like to come to the throne room of God boldly in the name of Jesus. We don't need to go to a priest. Oh, can, uh, excuse me, Father, Reverend Dr. Mother, can you get in touch with uh, God with me? Uh, I've got a problem. No, you just stand in there in the kitchen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come. The door's open. Because you came in the name of the name above every name. The name of Jesus. At the cross I found forgiveness. At the cross I found a friend. I found Lord Jesus. I found myself. Hey. How many are out there? It, 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 for some it's a pastime. For some it's a vocation. Some it's a sport. For some, I don't know what it is. It's their last resort to find themselves. I'm soul searching. Until you come to Jesus, you won't really know who you are. They have it on TV. Who am I? What am I? Where you're a sinner. That's who you are. You're a filthy sinner. Like everyone else. But if you repent, 
Jesus will forgive you and cleanse you and deliver you and empower you against that sin and he will tell you who you really are because only he knows because he's the only one that made you I knew you before you entered the womb and I anointed you and I appointed you as a prophet Jeremiah 1 5 I knew you before you entered the womb <laughs> see that we've got to go to our creator when you have a car and you don't know what's wrong with the car has it got a manual yes let's have a look when in doubt read the manual and us as new creatures we have a manual from Emmanuel the word of God and he will tell you who's who in the zoo who your real brother is who your real mother is who your real sister is he will tell you they are my mother sister and brother who hear the word of God and do it the rest history history I laid them down that day at Calvary all my burdens I gave to him now I'm free free to worship I'm free to go his way that word burden there I could have you say well you should have put sin in there why didn't you put sin on the second paragraph of my song poem I laid them down that day at Calvary bring all my burdens I gave to him now I'm free now I'm free I'm free to worship now I'm free to go his way that word burden I put in there 27 years ago I didn't want to just say sin because there's there's other things in our lives that are not sin that we need to be delivered of not just sin because you know sin is a burden but there's other burdens that we have we, we take it upon ourselves inferiorities and all sorts of things that aren't sin but sin is the biggest burden of all right? and we have to give it over we have to hand it give it up and the freedom will come the liberty the joy the peace it will come it will be heavenly the Bible describes it as mounting up with wings like eagles running and not getting weary walking and not fainting <laughs> soaring with the eagles not in a chook pen <laughs> digging around in a smelly stinky you know how chook pens stink that's like sin sin is a stench to the nostrils of God he's not coming back for a bride that stinks he's coming back for a spotless bride a sweet smelling aroma and fragrance to his nostrils right see we worship the Lord in, in the spirit of holiness by the Holy Spirit by the leading of the Holy Spirit I laid them down that day at Calvary all my burdens and sins I gave to him now I'm free so many people are free to worship and when we think of worship we think of you know ding 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 we think of hands in the air don't we oh worship how oh, great thou art we think of worship songs that's what we're taught I'm free to worship. Oh, I'm going to sing, sing, sing. 
But no, the scriptures tell us that Abraham worshipped God. When he went aside and he told the others to stay there and he had the knife in his hand and he's going to kill his son for Jesus. I'm going aside to worship. Obedience is worship. If you're playing some guitar, playing the drums and playing a harp and singing like a bird and you're not obedient to the Lord, it's just rubbish. God don't hear it. He said, what was that down there? Oh, some noise, I don't know. Just a clanging cymbal. I don't know what it was. Did you hear that, Jesus? <laughs> True worship. Obedience. Hey, obedience. To the Lord our God. How wonderful. Now I'm free, free to worship. I'm free to go his way. Look, you can't go the way of the Lord. You can't do what Jesus says with sin in your life. You will never take flight with sin in your life. Never. Ever. You will not leave the tarmac. You just go around. You'll look like a plane. You'll sound like a plane. and You'll go around that tarmac like a plane, but you won't fly like a plane. It just won't happen. You'll just never get it. It'll just be religion. You'll just be churched. And you just go like a robot to a building on Sunday. And then you'll take the usual coins out of your pocket. Oh, well, don't want to give too much to Jesus. You know, he hasn't really done much for me lately. Everyone else has given. I don't want to be seen to be sitting here on my own. I'm, they might think I'm this or that. The whole lot stinks. It's not love. It's not love. That's your stinking religion. Love is when you you have that freedom. Love is doing what Jesus says. We read it. If you keep my commandments, you will abide, you'll live in my love. You will live there. That will be your house. You will fulfill the new covenant. You will love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength and mind. The first and great commandment. The second commandment is not great. Remember that. It's just the second command. It's like, like the first, but it's not great. People are second, always. Always. I don't care if it's your wife. I don't care if it's your children. I don't care if it's your husband. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's your dad who bought you your first soccer boots. Second, Jesus is first. It's not family first. You see that advertising? Stickers on cars, family first. Everyone goes, oh, wow. That person must be really loving. Hogwash. How can they be? They don't have the love of God in them. They don't abide in God's love. Because the God of love is not first. If you keep my commands, you will abide in my love. Hey? The burden of sin. It's like a burden. It's a, it, it, you know, what Jesus done at the cross is phenomenal. It's just beyond. You could preach on the cross every day, every night, till you died. 
Because there's so much going on there. So much happened at the cross. At the cross, I found forgiveness. I can't help myself. I have to sing it. At the cross, I found forgiveness. At the cross, woo, I found. At the cross, I found Lord Jesus. At the cross, I found myself. I laid them down that day at Calvary. Oh, my burden. I gave them to him. Now I'm free. I'm free to worship. Now I'm free to go his way. Oh, such joy. Oh, such joy is to be found there. All the pain he gladly bear All the things, all the things I could not carry He gladly took them on himself See, the joy, the joy because he took all that stuff, every single bit, I don't care what it is, the past, the now, the yesterday, the tomorrow, he took it all. All the gossip, slander, all the, the garbage that's been spoken against you and about you, and, and they don't even know the truth. It's only a one-sided story. It's only accusation, not substantiation. It's only what... Some demented gossip has said. Oh, such joy is to be found there. The Bible calls it unspeakable. Joy unspeakable and it is garnished with glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. The joy that comes with walking with Jesus, not religion. I hate stinking religion. It stinks. It's putrid. As I say time and time again, if you know of a denomination or a church, and there's multiple, Anglican, AOG, COC, JWs, Roman Catholic, Hillsong, they have pedophilia records. They have records by independent judges. Records of pedophilia activity. Just reels of them. Don't ever go to that church because you'll be numbered with them. Don't ever go there. That's why Jesus said through Paul of the Corinthians, come out from among them and be separated. Have nothing to do with them. Right? We don't have in this fellowship a record of money laundering or pedophilia. We don't have that sort of thing. We don't have no money racket. We don't have no selling the word of God. Oh, this book about faith. And there's a price tag on the bone. We don't have that. We don't believe that. We believe the word of God is free. We believe that anyone that sells the word of God is a crook. But we need 
scripture to back that. So let's go to Revelation chapter 22. And then we'll get on the right road. I'm on the highway to holiness. Revelation 22, 17. The spirit and the bride say, come and let him who hears say, come and let him who thirsts come. And whoever desires, let him take the water of life. Free. Who said that? The Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, and the Bride. That's how you know a true church. The Bride is the church. A true church, there's no price tags and barcodes. This ministry has always given everything free. By faith, all books, CDs, DVDs, all literature, everything. That took a lot of hard work to do. No messing around. It takes a lot of hard work to put books together, manuscripts, CDs, DVD, a lot of hard work. Free. Show me your faith and I'll show you my faith by my works. By the way I operate. The concept that I do trust in the Lord. And I do believe he called me. And he who calls will meet the call. And he has for 29 and a half years. We don't preach the peddling of the word. We don't teach it. We don't teach tithing. It's not required of the New Testament church. Giving is required. From your heart. It should be a love thing. It's a loving thing the minister ministers. The, 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 the gems and the rubies and the diamonds of revelation knowledge that's a loving thing that he gives that but you can't get anywhere else as I was saying to Sister Patricia yesterday she was talking about forensic we were forensic counsellors and psychiatrists psychologists, and they all have a price some of them up to $500 an hour counselling You can check that out. Oh, that's the beauty of the World Wide Net. Check it out. From $100 to $200, $300, $400 an hour. Counselling. But here we give it free. <laughs> and it's not that crummy stuff. This is leading to eternal life. Eternal riches. Streets of gold and the gold's transparent. Why wouldn't anyone want to give? Why wouldn't anyone want to empty their pockets? I know I have. Comes back to that burden of sin, doesn't it? Self. The biggest sin of all, isn't it? Self. that God gave his son father gave his gave his son for pedophiles gave his son for lesbians gave his son for drunkards and wife bashers child molesters God gave his son for these so they could repent so they could come to the cross so they could Find forgiveness in a friend. Because sinners are lonely. Did you know that? Sinners are lonely people. That's why they sin. Because they're so lonely. And they'll find Lord Jesus. They're waiting like this. 
Welcome to my world. Won't you come on in? Miracles I give still happen now and then. Step into my heart and leave your cares behind. Welcome to my world built with you in mind. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so, but because it is so, I go, and I prepare a place for you. <laughs> One thing I know as I sit here today, regardless of anything or anyone else, I know the Lord's putting the pagola on my place now. <laughs> I know the Lord's prepared a place for me. I know that. I know it was beyond any measure of doubt. I, they need to, the people today, church and unchurch, they need to lay that sin down, lay the burdens, all those burdens. The wants, the needs, the, the, the pain, the heartache, it's too much. What Adam and Eve created was a burden that's just too much for humanity. It's far too much. We can't carry it. We heard what David said, didn't we? All the things that he said, talk about the burden of sin. My heart is unclean, it's a burden of sin. Right. Psalm 51. Let's have a quick look at that. Psalm 51. Verse 10. Create in me a clean heart. My heart is filthy. Because of sin. Because of sin. Do not cast. Or better still, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Sin causes us to waver, go here and there and everywhere, all over the place. We're not stable. We're in and out, aren't we? We're backslide for a month, come back again. Sin. Psalm 51 and the verses 11. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. See the burden, the burden of sin? And God has cast that away. He's cast those people away who are in sin. Actually, he said he's going to cast them into the lake of fire and brimstone. What a burden. They don't know that out there in the world, but they know there's something really heavy. I don't like this feeling. It's really bad. Because they're on the road that leads to hell. They're on the wide road. They're on the highway to hell. They don't know that. They can't describe it like that. Hey, they can't describe it like that. Psalm 51, 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Salvation has joy. Look at these church people. Are they joy-filled? They like they've been baptised in vinegar. Because they're religious. They're not saved. Joy. Joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. He gives me living waters and I thirst no more and hunger no more for the things of the world. And everybody said amen. Psalm 51. And uphold me with your generous spirit. Huh? He, he, he noticed that this, the Holy Ghost wasn't empowering him. Because he was in sin. This burden. 
this burden of sin that people have this burden of sin and they're out there today they're, they're, some of them are suiciding today thousands and millions are suiciding throughout the world because no one told them to repent no one told them repent turn from your sin oh i couldn't tell that to mum you know oh no because it wasn't convenient for them they didn't care about their mother's soul they didn't care about their their husband's soul they didn't care about their children's soul i can't tell them that they won't like me no more oh it's about you is it so you're in sin too you selfish thing what's your name eve mm. Psalm 51, 13. Then I will teach others, transgressors your way, and sinners shall be converted. The unconverted church girl will not be saved. We have to be converted. Unless we become like little children, be converted, and pick up our cross and follow Jesus, we won't be saved. But today's world and churches, they have this free lance, free for all, everyone's going to heaven, just be a nice person. Nah. No such animal will enter the kingdom. We've heard it here today. There's enough evidence in what I said here today to wipe out, once saved, always saved, to wipe out the philosophies of men and women of the most intelligent realm, just wipe it out and disregard it totally. And God give this to an uneducated, untrained man. Amen. Because he gets the glory. I'm just the vessel, an earthen vessel. And that's the way God has always had it. It's sort of like Paul who was Saul. I mean, what did he have when he was a Pharisee? He went to Bible college, didn't he? He said he did. He said he was trained by Gamaliel. He said he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, circumcised on the eighth day of the tribe of Benjamin. He had it all, but he had nothing. He had it so bad, his teaching was so skew with, he was killing and, 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 and sanctioning the death of the disciples of Christ. Talk about a burden of sin. And then God struck him down on the road to Damascus and said, from this day forward, I'm running the show. I will be Lord now, Saul. And he made the point and pressed the point by saying, I'm even going to change your name to Paul, because Paul means little. Amen? But he had nothing. Highly intelligent man. And he realised that he had to, if he wanted to attain to the resurrection, he had to know the fellowship of the suffering of crime right? I really only scratched the surface on this today but I mean a lot of people are finding so called treasure like I said on last Sunday uh, diamonds they're finding as big as footballs in, in the Philippines uncut like that But still poor. Kerry Packer died a pauper. Did you know that? Kerry Packer, he died a pauper. And so will his son. And so will the Murdochs. And so will Bill Gates and his family. They'll all die paupers if they don't repent. If they don't repent. They will die paupers. Let me guarantee you that. On the 18th of the 1st, 2017. The scriptures say so. Hey? Let's open our 
open our Bible. John 17, 3, I'm going to finish up. John 17. And the verse is 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. You see that? That's eternal life. You can never know Jesus, ever. You can never know Father, unless you do what Jesus says. You'll never know Him. You'll just know about Him. Like the church people, they just gathered information, gather, 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 sightsee, they wear t-shirts, you know, from Israel. They, got, they gather, gather, but they don't know Him. Because if they did know him, the Lord wouldn't be saying to them, go away from me, I don't know you. What did Paul say about knowing him? Let's go to Philippians chapter 3, please. Philippians, quickly and we'll finish. Philippians. Chapter 3. Just bear with me. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. If by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. That's how, that's how you're going to be saved. We have to know him. We have to know him. The power of his resurrection. That, that's not living in sin. Because Jesus came to take our sin away and resurrect us out of the mud of sin. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Are you suffering for Jesus' name today? Have you suffered? Do you suffer for Jesus? Not because you're a silly person. Most people suffer because they're silly. But suffering in the name of Jesus. Because you speak the truth. I tell you, few find the narrow gate. Matthew chapter 7 and we're finished. The burden of sin is our message today. It's a heavy, heavy burden. And we know who can lift it on true repentance. Matthew 7 and the verse says 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice sin, you who practice lawlessness. You see that? You remember John 17, 3? This is eternal life that you, that they may know you, the only true God. Eternal life and knowing Jesus have a seamless connection. Eternal life, knowing Jesus and obedience to the word are seamless. Like the Father, Son and Holy Ghost, seamless. One, knowing eternal life, having eternal life, knowing God and doing what Jesus says you can never, the Muslims will never know Father because they don't do what Jesus says. They'll never. And all the Jehovah Witnesses. Can someone say amen? amen. Aye. I'm going to finish now. 
on John 14 verse 23 this will put the cherry on the cake so to speak with the last few verses I've been reading which is John 17 3 Philippians 3 10 Matthew 7 22 23 this is John 14 23 if anyone loves me he will keep my word and my father will then love him And then we will come to that one and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my word. They do not love Jesus. They just say they do. And the, the word which you hear is not mine, but fathers who sent me. And now... I'm going to go back to our original starting spot. The three scriptures we started with. But now I come to you in these things I speak to in the world that they may have my joy. That's what happens when we receive the word. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. If you keep my commands, you will live in my love. At the cross, I found forgiveness. I found a friend, I found Lord Jesus, and I found myself. Amen. That's our message today on the 18th of the 1st, 2.17. I will leave it there.